Well, joining me live now from Pico Valletta in Spain is Heino Volker, Professor for Astroparticle Physics and Radio Astronomy and part of the telescope team. And a very good evening to you, Professor. You must be very excited. I want to start at the beginning here because everyone I've talked to today about black holes uh, nod sagely and pretend they know what they are. You ask them to explain it, they haven't got a clue. Now, in lay person's terms, can you give us your description of a black hole? Well, actually, a black hole is not a hole. It's actually a whole lot. It's a lot of stuff in a very small space pressed together. And so the gravitational attraction is very strong, so strong that even light will disappear in the black hole. Light will be attracted and disappear behind an event horizon and will never be seen again. So if you fall into a black hole, it will be a fantastic adventure, I think, but you will never be able to tell anyone because you're not able to send any information out from a black hole, be it radio waves or light. Where do you go? Are you trapped in it? Are you destroyed? Or do you come out in another dimension or what? Well, who knows? You know, nobody has done the trip yet, so uh, we don't know. In principle, you'll be actually crushed into an infinitely small point uh, until the rest of your life. You're going to be crushed and crushed and crushed forever. You're going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. That's at least the idea. Um, you have to test it, and that's why you have to do these experiments. In fact, you may actually survive falling into a black hole if it's just big enough. Uh, and so, yep, um, but I'd rather stay on the outside and look at it rather than falling into it. So it's all a theory, though, isn't it? Because we've never actually seen one. And this is uh, the attempt to actually lay eyes or, well, lay telescopes on one. Yes, uh, we've seen actions of black holes. We see, you know, plasma flowing out. We see a lot of light coming from a central region. Uh, we think they are black holes. We see stars going around a black hole with enormously high speed, 10,000 kilometers per second. Pardon my units. Um, and uh, we think that, you know, in the very center of our Milky Way, there is this mysterious object, this, uh, uh, this black hole. But indeed, we have not seen uh, what I've just described, that actually light disappears forever. And that's you know, why you need to make an experiment. You need to take a picture. OK, so why does this experiment uh, add to the, the power of vision, I suppose? And why hasn't it been tried before? These telescopes have been around. These hugely powerful observatories have been around for a while. Yes, uh, it's, it's part technology and it's part realising what you need to do. Uh, in fact, I did my PhD on this, and at some point I realized, oh, look, this emission, this radio emission at very high frequencies comes from near the event horizon. You know, that's light that's just about to disappear. Can we not see this? At the time, the, uh, the technology wasn't ripe enough, enough because you need uh, a lot of digital equipment at telescopes. What we do, we actually combine telescopes around the world, and they form a virtual network at the highest observing frequencies available to us today. And only now this is about possible. But then you actually get a, a resolution, a sharpness that allows you to see uh, a mustard seed in New York from uh, from the Netherlands, from Nijmegen, where I, you know, I teach. So what do you expect to to see? I mean, are we going to actually get an image? Are we going to what see a lot of a lot of stars shining brightly and then a big black blob in the middle? Well, sort of, that's the expectation, in fact, that you indeed see a black hole. You know, I call it the shadow of a black hole um, and, and some ring of fire around it. But you have to remember, this is the first experiment. And the resolution is just good enough to see something. You'll see, see a little dip in the very center. So it's just going to be, you know, a few pixels across. But of course, with time, uh, this may become better. And then we may see actual, you know, a, a, a sharp ring. And so we need more telescopes. And, and pardon, but I have, have to correct you, we only have uh, eight telescopes at the moment at six different locations, not 12. We'd love to have 12. Uh, and if you know, one of your gracious viewers out there you know, gives us like 5 million euros, we can build another telescope in Africa uh, to expand the network and make it even sharper. But right now, it's only uh, six mountains and eight telescopes. I'll see if I know anyone. Um, but, I mean, are you prepared, given that it's theoretical at this moment, are you prepared perhaps to be disappointed to have the theory of black holes disproved? Many, many hundreds of years ago, uh, everyone thought the Earth was flat, and then uh, Christopher Cl Columbus proved it wasn't. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'd be absolutely thrilled to be disappointed in this case, actually. Uh, I mean, so far, when we ever have tested the theory of general relativity, it has, you know, it, it has survived. Einstein had always, was always correct. Uh, so proving Einstein wrong would be, would be just great. 
uh, I just don't believe we're going to be able to do this with just one experiment. Um, but we know, we know that near the event horizon, something got to happen because quantum physics and general relativity, the two big theories that describe our universe, do not go together at the event horizon. So some new theory has to come out, whether that experiment can help to, uh, uh, to, 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 do, to find out what that is, I don't know, but at least we can make the very first step to do an ex experiment. Okay, well, we'll hope to talk to you afterwards. Best of luck with it, Professor. Very good to talk to you. Heino Falker there.